One of the most ubiquitous aspects of Harry Potter are the magic spells. And these spells are in Latin? Well, let's investigate that. And why is Latin associated with magic in the first place? I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. Oculus Reparo. Here, Hermione says Oculus Reparo. And this word, Reparo, this isn't where the stress goes, if this is indeed a normal Latin word. Now, you know the penultimate stress rule from the previous videos. Where does the stress go in this word? That's right, it goes on re, because the penultimate syllable, ba, is short. It doesn't have a long vowel, and it doesn't end in a consonant. Reparo would be the normal Latin pronunciation of this word. And she says oculus, oculus, is an eye. It has nothing to do with eyeglasses, of course. Eyeglasses in Latin are perspicilla ocularia. Perspicillum is anything you can look through, some kind of telescope, microscope, or even something like this, spectacles. But perspicilla ocularia, or for short, ocularia, are eyeglasses. Normally we just call these ocularia. But if the word oculus can stand in for the lens of the eyeglass here, which is broken, then there is one significant problem with this as a Latin sentence. Oculus can't be in the nominative case. It has to be in the accusative case, the case for the direct object. Oculum reparo would be the correct Latin phrase. Wingardium leviosa. So, Leviosa, or Leviosa, or however we might attempt to pronounce it in a more classical Latin way, is not a Latin word at all, actually. It clearly derives from the Latin word Levis, or in the ecclesiastical pronunciation, Levis, which means light, light and weight. But this ending of Osa doesn't go with it. It's already an adjective on its own, Levis. And this is where I think it's important to realize that none of these spells are really in Latin. With a couple exceptions, almost none of them pass for anything close to what could be considered the Latin language. They're clearly inspired by Latin, but the author is using words that are Latin or Latin-like, or jamming real Latin words together to make new fictional words, because this is the universe that she is creating in these really lovely, fun stories. They're part of the aesthetic, and they're not trying to be real Latin. So with that in mind, we'll go through a few others to see how they hold up. Ferraverto. Ferraverto. So, ferra huerto can actually pass for a Latin sentence. Huerto means I turn. Probably a better word here might be muto, but huerto, turn, as in to change something. Eh, it's close enough. And ferra are wild beasts. Now, it could be an animal ferum, a wild animal, or it could be a bestia ferra, a wild animal or wild beast. Those terms are essentially synonymous. Here, if we take it to be the accusative plural of animalia ferra, wild animals, and huerto, it works because neuter nouns like ferra, animalia ferra, can have that same form. It doesn't have to be ferram, bestiam, ferram, huerto, or muto. The spell expelli... Spelliamus. The spell expelli... How do I pronounce this? This is difficult. Expelliarmus is what I would want to say, but it's not Latin, so there's no reason to actually pronounce it with any kind of real Latin pronunciation. Expelliarmus. This clearly seems to come from expello, which means I expel, and arma, weapons. Arma virumque cano, Troia, qui primus aboris. But jamming the two words together like this simply isn't something that Latin is capable of. It doesn't really mean anything in Latin. So on its own, not Latin, doesn't make sense to someone who actually knows the Latin language. This, again, like all the other spells, is simply the jargon of the wizards and witches. This is their made-up conlang of a sort, which works for the magical spells. And obviously, in the fictional universe, these spells, as pronounced, with whatever pronunciation they use, they really work. So there's no authenticity, there's no actual Latin, really, to get upset with. But we can compare it to real Latin. Everte statum. So to turn out the state. 
this spell seems to have to do with flipping someone backwards. So that's what it can do. Uh, these Latin words don't really necessarily apply to that action, but they do, of course, in this fictional universe. Volate ascendere! Al alarte ascendere, ascendere means to ascend. Ascendare here doesn't really work. It could be the subjunctive ascendaris with the simplification in ascendare, which means may you ascend. However, I'm pretty sure that's not what was intended here. And alarte, I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to mean. Ivana Ivanaska. God bless Alan Rickman. He brings dignity to everything, even these totally made up words like Evanesca. So Evanescat, if it had a T at the end, or Evanescas, may you disappear, may it disappear. That could work. And since we have Wipera, Wipera Evanescat, may the viper disappear. And the T is truncated off. In this fictional universe, we can imagine wizards and witches using spells for hundreds or thousands of years, and that the language would change, things would be altered, maybe wizards are changing the words around in order to give them a more secret power or effect. There's all sorts of in-universe explanations for why the Latin is so terrible, but that's because it's, again, in the fictional universe, as well as in the real world, where the author is just using stuff that sounds kind of like fun, made up Latin, it's all for the aesthetic, and it all can be explained and justified. Lumos Maxima! Lumos is not a Latin word. There is lumen, which means light, or could be a source of light. Luminosus is an adjective meaning luminous. So lumos, it could be a contraction or something in the jargon of the wizards, but again, it's not a real Latin word on its own. Expecto Patronum! Ah, finally, we have a real Latin sentence. Expecto Patronum. So a patronus is a patron. Thanks, by the way, all of you who are patrons. Really appreciate it. And expecto means I wait. So I wait for the patron. <laughs> so even when these sentences can make sense, they don't literally seem to indicate with great detail or specificity exactly what they do. And that's okay. This is a fictional universe filled with fictional spells, which are mostly inspired by Latin words mixed up together, either in the fictional context of the wizards and witches who are deliberately making up a kind of jargon in order to keep the spells difficult to understand. If you could just take a magic wand and say whatever Latin words you wanted in correct Latin, well then anybody could do it, right? So you have to learn the specific jargon in the classroom in order to be able to actually do these spells. Also, Rowling probably doesn't particularly care about trying to make some sort of exact Latin thing because it doesn't matter. Just having the fun of the sound of something that's kind of like Latin and yet clearly different from real Latin at the same time is part of the entertainment of the books and the movies, in my opinion. So why is Latin even used in magic spells? Well, it seems to be because, well, as you may know, Latin has been a continuously spoken and written language for thousands of years. It is a dead language, meaning there's no community of monolingual Latin speakers anywhere, or their only language that they use in some town or village or country is Latin, including the Vatican, where they tend to use mostly English and Italian these days. That's what makes it a dead language. However, people have been speaking Latin fluently for, again, thousands of years in some form or another. But since the fall of the West, Roman Empire, the number of true native Latin speakers has definitely diminished more and more, and as the Romance languages evolved and differentiated themselves from the Roman Imperial Latin, from the Classical Latin that we learn in school, learning Latin became something more special, something that only truly educated people could achieve if they had the means and the opportunity to actually study the language and to be able to read its literature. That means that all of the most interesting and important information from religious texts to philosophy texts to science, business, all of these things that only educated, literate Latin readers could access, that was all associated with the Latin language. And also, of course, there was alchemy and other things associated with magic. And the written language for thousands of years in Western Europe was simply Latin. And all of the other vernacular languages, they didn't really have much in the way of literature until during and after the Middle Ages, 
Thus, any really old text that has to do with magic would be in Latin, just like all the other texts of the time. One difference, perhaps, is that other ideas like philosophy and science and business, we write about those in all of the modern vernacular languages. Well, all the things like alchemy or other magical practices weren't readily explored much after the Middle Ages anyway. And thus an idea associating the Latin language with them seems to have been maintained. But even in English, the idea of Latin being the magical language, it goes back pretty far. Let's talk about the etymology of glamour. We associate the word glamour today with fashionable style. But for any of you that ever watched True Blood, you'd know that the vampires would use the verb to glamour someone, meaning to enchant them with some kind of magical spell. No one is going to hurt you. Would you like to try? Huh? Leaning close so you could catch his gaze and just let everything go. And this is the older meaning of the word. The word glamour comes from an alteration of the word grammar in Scots language. And then the word glamour was reborrowed into English. And why grammar? Because grammar in Latin, grammatica, this Greco Latin word, grammatica, was associated with the Latin language. In fact, Dante, in his essay in Latin, De Vulgari Eloquentia, he talks about the language grammatica, which he identifies with the Latin language. In that essay, he talks about, why do we learn this grammatica, this Latin language, this written formal language, when we could instead be writing literature and poetry in our native language, in his case, the Florentine dialect of Tuscan. So the word glamour is indeed associated with magic spells written in the grammatica language, written in the Latin language. And speaking of expecto patronum, gratias ago omnibus patronis meis. Thanks to all of my patrons, and thank you for subscribing, liking, and sharing this video. Valete!